Hi there, it's another lovely sunny day. Uh, this is Friday the 23rd of April and it's time for another thought for the day. Thank you for joining me and uh, allowing me the privilege of chatting to you again. Um, have you ever read uh, a book <laughs> that's uh, made you wonder if you're even a Christian at all? You know, maybe it's a biography of somebody who's done wonderful things for the Lord or maybe it's not, maybe it's a different type of book. But you've, you've read the book and you've wondered, you know, <laughs> why couldn't I be like that? I'm not even close to being like that person or doing what that person was able to do. And you come away thinking, am I a, a Christian at all? Well, of course, um, those who uh, believe and follow the Lord Jesus Christ are of course believers it's not based on our works uh, we're not saved by our works but of course the works that follow our profession of faith are very important because they are the proof that we do belong to the Lord but I don't want to go down that road today I'm sure we've all read books like that that have been really challenging and I can't help but notice uh, or can't help but remember that every time I go out to take a service in the church, um, of course, I prepare in my little study in the vestry, uh, get the microphone on, get uh, make sure the, the readings are all properly marked in the Bible and uh, just settle myself with a, a short word of prayer. And, and then as I go out the door uh, to go into the, the main part of the church to have the service and to preach and so forth. I, of course, I, I pass books that are there on the bookshelf and there's always one book that catches my eye and I really should remove it and put it somewhere else because it's one of those books that um, I have read and it challenged me and it made me basically wonder uh, what I'm doing with my time, whether I'm uh, wasting it or using it properly or um, things like that. Now, it, it's a biography. It's a biography that I've mentioned before and uh, I hope you recognise the name Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, just in case uh, any of you don't know who Bonhoeffer was, he was a, a German pastor, um, German theologian, and he was a, a Nazi dissident. He, he was against the, the Nazi regime. Uh, he was born in 1906, so um, when he was in his what late 20s, early 30s, the Nazis came to power in Germany. Now, Bonhoeffer was one who immediately saw the dangers um, of the Nazis and what was going on in the country, and he immediately took a stance against them which, as we all know, was a very dangerous thing to do. Um, but he uh, he persevered. The church uh, that he was involved in became uh, under more and more pressure uh, to conform to what the Nazis were telling him to do. And, of course, Bonhoeffer would have none of that. So he, he was basically driven underground. Uh, by that, we just mean that uh, he had to meet in hiding and uh, stay away from the, the powers that be that were trying to um, squash what he was doing. It got so bad, actually, that uh, his friends told him uh, to get out of the country. And he did, briefly, he went uh, to America. He, he travelled around Europe. He was in London for a while as well. But um, he, he went to America for safety. And his conscience wouldn't let him stay there. You know, his people, his church, were back in Germany undergoing all the uh, terrible things that were going on there. And he felt that he should have been with his own people. So against the advice of his friends and uh, even his family, he returned to Germany and he stayed there uh, ministering for as long as he could. Now, I say uh, as long as he uh, as he could because he was finally imprisoned. He was put in prison in 1943 and he remained there for about a year and a half. Uh, just towards the end of the war, he was moved to a concentration camp and there he was finally hanged. 
and uh, it's tragic really because uh, he was hanged on the 9th of April 1945 uh, which was well about two years before that particular concentration camp he was in was liberated and just about three or four weeks before the actual end of the Second World War. So he was one of those who was uh, quickly executed uh, as the Germans were trying to, the Nazis were trying to cover their tracks um, towards the uh, end of the war. Now he's not only a, a church leader and a pastor, uh, he's also a theologian and some people believe that the things he said and did were actually quite prophetic. Um, he didn't um, profess to be a prophet in any way, shape or form, but the, as time has gone on, uh, people are uh, appreciating the value more and more of his writings. For example, now he, uh, he wrote um, several books, um, two of the most famous, and I would recommend these to anybody and everybody. Uh, the first one's just a uh, a smallish book uh, looks like a very uh, narrow paperback but don't judge a book by its cover uh, it's called life together and it's about uh, the church the challenges of church living and community church living in times that are difficult uh, of course it was written because of the difficulties he was going through in the 30s uh, but it's still very relevant today because we still are a church trying to live in the community, in a society which is increasingly difficult uh, to reconcile our beliefs with. So that's the uh, the first one, Life uh, Together. But his most famous work, it's now um, classed as a classic, it is called The Cost of Discipleship. And it does exactly what it says in the title. It's just a description of the cost of following the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I, I want to give you just a, a quotation from Bonhoeffer and then I suppose it might be a wee bit random but uh, another quotation from John Wesley but you'll see the connection in the two quotations okay and uh, the first one's from Bonhoeffer and uh, this is from his biography a, a biography which I would recommend to you by Eric Metaxas. It's the one that sits on the shelf as I walk out of the study and puts me off every time I look at it. It's a very distinctive cover, light blue. It's a biography that was on about 10 years ago and it's a gripping read um, and I would recommend it if you want a wee bit of Christian history and uh, Christian biography as well. Um, Bonhoeffer uh, by Eric Metaxas. Anyway, on page 248 of that particular book, uh, we read this. Uh, Bonhoeffer, and this is, it was written, don't forget, uh, in the 30s, and it's still very topical today. Bonhoeffer felt that what was especially missing from the life of Christians in Germany was the day-to-day -day reality of dying to self, of following Christ with every ounce of one's being in every moment, in every part of one's life. Christ, he says, must be brought into every square inch of the world and the culture. But one's faith must be shining and bright and pure and robust. Um, I just think it's a wonderful uh, quotation. Um, and the challenge is there. Uh, you know, it makes me wonder at what I'm doing with my life because uh, here we have the day-to-day -day reality of dying to ourself, living for Christ, following Christ with every ounce of our being, every moment in every part of our life. There's a challenge to live up to. Now, just to finish, I'll flick over a page here because I uh, my eye fell on another quotation that I have from John Wesley and it's basically saying the same thing. So here's something down through the ages. You know, Wesley lived in the 1700s and he's basically saying exactly the same thing as Bonhoeffer is saying and what we all should be saying. 
But Wesley says this, and I think this is a lovely turn of phrase. Maybe you've heard this one. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. There we are, friends. We've got to be active as Christians and we've got to follow Christ, not when we choose, but all the time in all departments and aspects of our life. I don't know about you, but that certainly challenges me. I leave the thought with you, John Wesley and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, wonderful servants of the Lord. Thank you for listening and uh, keep safe. This is Friday, so enjoy the weekend. Maybe I'll see some of you in church and uh, keep praying that uh, the churches will open again very soon. Uh, keep yourself safe. Uh, keep praying generally. And uh, thank you for allowing me to chat to you. And uh, please tune in again for another thought for the day. Until then, it's yet another. Bye for now.